What's up guys, Arcane Jumanga here and you are watching Tezuka Season, a series of videos where I take a chronological and retrospective look at the works of Samuel Tezuka. Uh, coming in with a new instalment this week, this is episode 6 and I am reviewing Ode to Kirihito, uh, the first in this series of videos that is actually a seinen title I believe, uh, and one that I really, really, really enjoyed. Um, okay, so uh, Ode to Kirihito is uh, a two volume series, or two volumes that were published in English by Vertical. Uh, I was highly anticipating reading this series. Uh, it's actually one of the newest Tezuka manga that I've actually uh, actually bought. Um, and basically, uh, what, what is Otakirito? Uh, Otakirito is basically uh, a tale of revenge and self-discovery uh, for, for one man. Uh, Osanai Kirihito, who you can see on the cover there. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, Osanai Kirihito uh, is a young um, intern doctor at uh, M University Hospital, one of the most prestigious uh, university hospitals in all of Japan. And uh, he's generally liked by all of his colleagues. He's a member of the Young Doctors Association, um, but he's actually uh, he's, he's, he's mentored by the uh, the, uh, the university director, which is uh, Dr. Kat, uh, Tatsugara. Uh, now, he's not actually really liked by Tats uh, Dr. Tatsugara, um, unbeknownst to to him, um, because he's so popular. Um, you know, Tatsugara basically sees him as a threat. And um, meanwhile. Uh, in, 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 a, in a remote village, uh, there's been a, um, a, a disease um, that's been discovered that basically turns people into dog-like creatures called uh, called Mon Monmouth disease. And um, th there's basically no theory as to how this uh, disease is caused or contracted. But um, uh, Kirihito believes that it's something that's contracted um, and it's not actually a virus, it's some kind of disease. Whereas Tatsugara believes it, that, that that's some, it's a contagion that can be contracted, you know, from somebody who has the disease. So basically, the, the, there's two, these two different theories, and Dr. Tatsugara tried to basically win chair, uh, win win the chair of the Japanese Medical Association, based on this theory that um, Monmouth disease is a contagion. But basically, um, Kirihito tried to contradict him by saying, but that there's no evidence to suggest that it's a, that, that it's a pathogen, and that uh, it's something that can be contracted through you know other means other than a virus. So uh, Tatsugara arranges for. Uh, um, for Kirito to basically do some on-site research um, in this village called uh, Dogdale. Oh, that's what it's called in the English translation anyway. And uh, he, he goes to the village, um, basically researches and basically um, analyses the, the patients there, the people who have contracted the modern disease, you know, people who are basically growing fur, the hands are growing into like paws, the, the long, you know, the, there's, you know, really weird um, bone um, deformations in the, in the head and the face, which basically make them resemble um, like dogs. Um, and ultimately caused death through respiratory failure. Uh, so he's basically doing on-site research in this village, trying to um, come to some um, kind of amicable theory um, that uh, Mon Mal disease is essentially something that's, um, you know, um, a bit like caught via, you know, the environment or something like that. He's trying to prove that it's not a virus. But this actually turns out to be a plot uh, from Dr. Tatsugawa to basically make us and I contract Mon Mal and basically wipe him off the records and kill him. Uh, just so we can basically remove uh, Kirihito from the picture. Um, and this ultimately ends up happening. Um, Kirihito uh, ends up contracting Mon Mal disease. And, um, you know, the, the Dr. Kata, Dr. Tatsugawa can then basically employ his scheme um, to basically um, get rid of Kirihito, wipe him off of all the records, and uh, pretend that he basically, you know, he, he, he never came back. Um, so basically from that point, uh, Kirihito um, enters on a journey of uh, basically revenge, you know, trying to basically uh, make his way back to Japan, um, you know, basically uncovering hardships. And it's at this point where uh, Tezuka's flair to basically, um, you know, depict humans in like the most ingrate, despicable nature possible because, you know, uh, Kirihito essentially ends up travelling the world um, with no, no real sort of destination. Um, he ends up um, being, you know, sold into slavery and you know, and it ends up being like abused by, you know, tormentors who basically uh, collect freaks. Um, and, you know, he, he comes across people who, you know, he, he considers allies and, you know, ends up losing them through, you know, different various circumstances that basically, um, you know, basically, as soon as he hit rock bottom, it, you know, he just keeps going further down, spiraling into a, a basically a pit of uh, hatred and, you know, misery and tragedy, because this is ultimately what this story is. It's, you know, got heavy tragic elements. Uh, and that's what basically makes uh, Kirihito such, um, you know, uh, uh, an empowering but also empathetic character. You really empathise with this situation because, you know, he's been thrown into this situation, um, which kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Kenzo Tenma from um, 
from uh, Naki Urasawa's monster, and I can see basically where Naki, Naki Urasawa was taking inspiration, possibly from this story, um, because Kirito is essentially uh, a really, um, you know, a really good doctor. Um, he's basically, um, you know, uh, betrayed by his seniors and uh, cast out like, you know, a scapegoat, uh, essentially. And that's kind of, you know, resemblant of, uh, us, um, of Kenzo Tenma's situation um, from Monster. Um, so, you know, I, I, really like, I, saw, I really like the comparisons between the two stories. Uh, one thing also to note in this series is uh, Tezuka's portrayal of different sort of character archetypes. Um, you have obviously the, the lead, uh, uh, Kirihito, who's, you know, he's actually a very psychologically complex character who starts off very confident and, you know, very sure of his, you know, abilities to be a good doctor. And then you just see him gradually get break and broken down mentally and physically. Um, and, you know, he, he starts to lose confidence in himself to, you know, perform as a doctor and, you know, sees himself as worthless. Um, then, then you have um, uh, Kirihito's best friend uh, and, you know, fellow colleague um, whose name escapes me, Odabe who is possibly one of the most complex characters in this series because he's one of the characters who, you know, he, he's on the fringe and the periphery between good and evil. He does noble things, you know, in order to, to help Kirihito because he ends up having to go on, um, you know, try and search for Kirihito himself because, you know, there's obviously some form of uh, conspiracy going on. But then, you know, he's, he seems to do, like, really despicable things, like he, he, he rapes um, uh, Kirihito's fiance Izumi within the first few pages of the story, so you know from that get-go that in the first chapter that it's going to be a very complex character and he just keeps bouncing with it towards, you know, righteous and, you know, um, evil, you know, he's, he's a really complex character and um, that, that's one thing, that's one of the main themes in, in this series is um, the, the, the balance between good and evil and um, Tezuka employs um, heavy uses of uh, like Christian imagery and religious imagery uh, one, of the main, one of the side characters who contracts Mama disease is actually a former nun uh, our nunnery, um, who uh, gradually begins to accept the situation and sees it as like a test by God, and Arabe try you know helps us do this, but also you know the scenes where like he tries to force himself upon her and rapes her and things like that, and it's really 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 weird. Um, you know the the, the way Tezuka um, basically juxtaposes the the wickedness of human nature and uh, the the righteousness you know that's you know employed within religion into the story and you know implies that into the suffering that you know Kirihito and other side characters go through uh, I found that absolutely brilliant I thought you know that the way that Tezuka weaved that into the stories was really clever um, one thing to note as well is that artwork is uh, a lot more realistic than, um, than, than the series that I've previously read by him because it's a seinen title so he's gone for you know heavy realism you know in terms of the character designs you know the backdrops uh, there's you know very li little comedy uh, in this series and one, one thing that I was really interested in is um, there's, there's quite a few uh, points in the start of the manga where Tezuka's used a technique uh, with his line work where he basically um, draws his line work with like jagged edges and that really adds tension and um, you know uh, tension to the actual characters and you, you can see how uh, that's re you know reflective of how the characters are feeling in that particular you know moment because uh, Tezuka draws out the characters but then the outlines are very jagged and uh, you know, I just thought that that use of tension was really, really, you know, really clever. Um, also, you know, the dynamic paneling, uh, you know, the panel work in this manga is, you know, very, very, uh, very different and much better from than what I've seen, you know, from his previous works. Uh, so overall, really, I don't really have anything bad to say about this manga. Um, you know, I really enjoyed it from start to finish. I thought it had a really good ending. Uh, there, were, there was no characters that I thought were unnecessary. Um, you know, the the, the female characters, the, there's. You know, female characters within the manga that you know stand out and you know basically um, you know function as their own sort of independent sort of you know arc, uh, character archetype. Uh, like Izumi is you know his his budding fiance who you know he's got you know lots of love for him and ultimately wants to end up finding him. But for the most part, she doesn't really develop that much. Um, if I had to you know give kind of a negative, but the other female characters in this series like uh, Tazu, who uh, um, Kirihito meets in um, in Dogadale Village, who you know ultimately becomes his wife. Uh, she's a really interesting character, uh, but the most interesting female character in the series is R uh, Reka, who is a circus performer and one of the um, w one of the freaks that uh, Kirihito meets when he's sold into slavery. And she's a very complex character, and you can see how she's been psychologically broken down, um, you know, in her years of being a slave. Um, so you know, there's really interesting characters in this series. Uh, the, the, the most interesting characters being uh, Tatsugara, Kirihito himself, and Urabe. I, I love those three, two, those three characters. And uh, trying to see basically, uh, you know, Tatsugaru always get like a one up on anybody who tries to contradict his theory that uh, Mon Maldives is actually, um, you know.
you know, it, it's not a uh, contagion. So overall, uh, I highly recommend this series. Uh, I'll give this video a solid 8.5 out of 10. Um, it's not perfect. And, uh, you know, the, the, there's elements where, you know, um, you do feel kind of like awkward and uncomfortable. Um, you know, for obviously the, the sexual abuse scenes and things like that. And um, one of the one of the abuse scenes is a little bit unclear as to what exactly happens. Um, which, you know, I didn't really appreciate too much. Um, I, I would have rather, it, you know, either not been there or it would have been, you know, a little bit more clear. Um, but, you know, that's kind of like my only real negative about the series. Um, overall, like I said, it's, it's, it's an absolutely brilliant series. I highly recommend anybody to read Otokirihito. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's my review of Otokirihito. Uh, if you want to buy this, um, then, you know, you obviously it's still available online. It's still in print. Uh, if you want to support me um, as a, you know, a content creator, then you can click on uh, my book depository uh, affiliate link in the description below where basically if you click on that link uh, any sales made off that link i'll get a percentage of the you know of the sale uh, helps me out uh, obviously you get cheap mango it's free worldwide delivery you know i use book depository myself it's a really good place uh so yeah um tell me your thoughts on otakirito in the, uh, the comment section below um have you read this manga uh, do you think this is manga that are better than this um you know stay tuned for episode seven um i will be reviewing uh, ayako which you know uh, i'm currently reading at the moment and it's absolutely excellent uh, so yeah, until then, Arcane Jamanga, signing out.